All right, welcome back to another hour with Ib. Uh, this is going to be a longer one because I missed the last four days due to sleep deprivation. Um, but I am hopefully going to do four hours here. That will be a lot of talking, so we'll see if my voice help, holds out. All right, so last time we left off, we had this mostly set up. Um, the main problem was that I was having trouble getting the test to work because I did not know how to use unit test. I think I have enough unit test knowledge to be able to get it to work. Um, uh, so we should be able to do that this time. Uh, another cleanup notice before we start is that I have started using a noise gate um, because I have the window open. We'll see if that actually works, if you can actually hear me. Um, I do have OBS monitoring open here, so I should be able to see if my audio goes really wonky, but I might cut out because I'm whispering too much. If so, oh well, you'll still be able to see the screen. Um, all right, uh, let's get to that code. Uh, I also lost power at some point over the three days, um, and that means that I lost everything that I was working on. So. Let's see what we are missing here. Um, I'm going to go to resume, back end. Now we need to make sure that the back end is up and running. Go ahead and pop that open. Okay. Make sure that actually started. Seems to be fine. Um, Mongo doesn't seem to be up though. Why is Mongo not up? Huh. Okay. Ah, I know why. Um, so the reason for this is that it was, <laughs> I didn't have them connected. Let's go ahead and do that because I don't need that anymore to do the testing. Um, I actually do. I do need it to do the testing because I need to see if the health check will do it properly. Okay, uh, let's pop open. Editor. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, before I start editing, though, let's see what I had been working on. So, the disadvantage, lots of disadvantages, but the disadvantage as far as Vim is concerned of your computer suddenly turning off is that you get random files in the left open in the well, it, it should be in swap, but I guess it had a more graceful shut off. I don't know. Huh. All right, let's go ahead and open up our Docker Compose stuff. So Docker Compose YAML and split it and Docker Compose override dev stuff. And you can see I have Depends on Mongo, not connected. Um, let's open up our main app file. And let's open up our database file, our database connection file. And finally, our tests. So tests slash test Mongo connection. And test slash test health connection. Open whatever. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to remove that noise gate. If I mumble too much for it to matter. Uh, unfortunately, means you're going to get some background noise, but I think that's. Uh, an affordable payoff? I don't know why I can't think of the right word for that. Whatever. Okay. So, uh, I also made a slight decision on how to change this. Namely, um, so we have this here, which creates a client connection, but the problem is that that client connection isn't necessarily valid 
until we run a command on it. Now, what I was planning on doing is having the uh, the health endpoint run that one command, the server info. That's that's fine, I guess, but it means that we don't know that the database has failed until we try to initiate some sort of command on it. And the problem with that is that that means um, the exception that I experience if the database is down will occur in a random spot in the code. And I definitely don't want that. I want that error that server is not up to happen in a singular point every time. Because if I want to go in and debug why something isn't working, I want to know where it's not working. So what we're going to do is we're going to have the server info check in here. Now, so that I can approach TDD, <laughs> um, I'm going to try doing that from here. So, um, do, do, do. so we're testing the teardown here. Uh, App.db.closedDB. Trying to figure out where everything is going on here. Uh, so this is app.db.closedDB, which is, where is it referenced? Oh, it's just the closed db command under db. Um, and what we do is we create an app, we do a test client, we call test, which is our our uh, dummy endpoint for now before we get the health endpoint working properly. Um, so health is going to be where we're hitting in the future. And that's the one that we're gonna check for the closed. So when we get test, it it accesses the database, so it does something with the database, and then um, it goes into get db, it returns to g.db, that's fine. Um, that's not mocked out, is it? It is. Uh, app.gd, app.g, db client equals mock. Um, what? I'm missing something here. I'm not mocking the db.getDB. Oh, that's that's not good. Uh, so what that means is that this test is actually creating that connection and it's actually going in and creating the Mongo client. I don't want that. I wanted to not do that. Um, so I think what I want to do is fully mock G. Maybe. So I don't feel like mocking out all of this just so that I can get that one call. I could mock the get DB. That would make sense. Um, if I mock the get DB, then this. So I need to mock the pop as well, right? No, because in an app is connecting the close DB, so I'm fine. Okay, so let's go ahead and mock out uh, um, app dot. And I don't know if I mentioned this, but I got like eight working and it's <laughs> it was very angry at a lot of the stuff I was doing. You'll see a lot of that in the commit um, that I do for this. All right, so app.getDB as, actually, I don't, I, I don't care about that because um, I'm not checking that it's calling getDB. I'm checking that, uh, I'm just patching it out so that it doesn't do anything. All right, so that command now does nothing init app still attaches closed db in the teardown app context, which we do want. Um, g.db client is just a mock, and so dot server info does nothing. That's good. Um, and then when this is done, 
the teardown app context should call close db. And we have mocked close db as patched close. So we should be able to assert that it is called once. Let's go ahead and run this. So uh, we need to go into get work, resume, backend. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. DCE backend knows two. Let's just run all of them. No. Module app does not have the attribute get key. Oh, <laughs> wrong one. It's an app.db. Uh, so get db is a is a method in the db module, not in the app module. All right. Let's go ahead and get rid of that and make sure this fails. Yeah, yeah, I know, Blake. Eight. Expect to close DB to have been called once, called zero times. Hooray, that's exactly what we wanted when it failed. Okie dokie. Um, let's see, what else? All right, so that there should be exactly what we want. But um, we do need to change this from slash test to slash health eventually. What I'm going to do is uh, after I've set up all of these to use the slash test one, um, I'm going to delete the slash test endpoint. That will cause all of them to fail. Then I'll put them on slash health um, and I'll make sure that they all pass. And I'm going to have to do some rejiggering of this to make sure that it's minimal. Okay, um, test get db opens client with app config. <clears throat> and it's saying to get db direct call. Okay, I also want another test here. Test get db checks connection. Um, so this will be verifying that we make a call to server info. So this is a direct call and verifies server info call. Okay, pass. We also want, um, I'm just noticing, oh yeah, close DB, close this client connection, good, okay. Uh, so we also want test get db um, what do we want to do if it fails let's raise an exception raises exception if mongo not available ah. <laughs> Uh, so this is I get DV direct call and we're going to mock server info yeah so we should mock server info to return um, where'd you fail on me? No, oh, to raise. What is that error? Um, what am I looking for? This. Yes. Okay, so this should raise. Come on. It's not going to tell me. Fine, I will force it myself. So, DC backend Python. And we're going to do, um, 
let's go ahead and do exactly this. So we need to import PyMongo. And then we're going to do client equals pymongo.mongo client. Um, we need to pass it the URI and port. And we're going to pass it the URI of bogus and a port of bogus. No, a port, I guess. That port must be an instant. One, two, three, four. There we go. Um, and then client.server info should throw an exception after an extended period of time because I forgot to set the time out. Oops. There we go. Okay. Uh, let's, let's try to close the connection. Cool. Okay. And I think. There's a specific one. Here we go. Server selection timeout build seconds. So knowing that it's named something like that, it should be named something more obvious, but this is PyMongo is basically just a very limited wrapper around Mongo, so we can forgive it that. And I'm going to give it this is always going to be running on the same server, so half a second is more than enough time for it to time out. So let's do client server info. Should take a half a second. Boom. Half a second down and we get a server selection timeout error. Um, but I don't want that. I want pymongo.errors.server selection timeout error. Let's see if that works. So, oops, uh, paste. Okay, so we're going to expect mock server info to raise that. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, why are you complaining? Expect an index. Oh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Thank you, Flake Eight. Um, all right, so we're going to have server info raise that because that is the error that would normally pop up if we could not connect. Cool. Um, we might want to have other errors at some point for things like uh, collections missing, stuff like that. But for now, this is fine. Um, I might also just let PyModem take care of things like that. So. All right, if you hear random scratching in the background, that's my cats having lots of energy. So apparently this is the time they want to play together. All right, so it should check the connection. And if the connection is not available, it should raise an error. Cool. Um, in general, we want to mock out server info because we don't want this being called every time. Uh, db client, here we go. Uh, so there's, it's gonna be called on the client. Um, so db underscore client is the one that's gonna be called. Do, 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 where is this? What do we do on client? We don't do anything. Self.db client is a mock. Cool. And pop should return. Where is it? Where is pop override? Oh, pop override. No, <laughs> pop override doesn't do anything. Pop override will return self.db client. Um, so when we pop client, it will be a mock. Um, so we want to expand that mock during these two, but otherwise we don't care. So server info is fine. Cool. All right. I think, 
that's everything. So test get db opens client with app config. Yes, uh, that's that should be this call here. Um, and so we're going to verify that this. We're going to verify that this thing is called with specific uh, values. And right now, I'm going to go ahead and put in um, server timeout, no, server selection timeout milliseconds equals 500. Is Flake Eight going to complain? It is not. Awesome. Uh, so, Flake 8 is also using PEP 8, um, and one of the PEP 8 rules is your uh, variables should be underscore separated and be all lowercase. Well, that's not the case here. Obviously, it's using camel case because Mongo is C based, and C has a, uh, a standard of using camel case. Um, but apparently, as long as it is a parameter into a method, Flake 8 doesn't care, PEP 8 doesn't care. But if I wrote a method that accepted a uh, camel case variable, it would probably complain about that. I'm not sure. I'm not going to test it because I don't care enough. We're going to move on. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and test that one right away. So this one's an easy one. We're just going to say, um, oh, let's go ahead and make sure that we're doing this. So app equals create app, test client, and app.get. Why am I mocking current app? Patching current app. Current app. What are you doing here? Ah, current app.config. There we go. All right. Um, opens a client with app config. Um, so let's go ahead and mock our patch client config. So I haven't looked into how to change a patch once it's running. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's do self.currentapp.config equals um, gonna go ahead and do that. We'll see if uh, Flake 8 complains about this. So database URI is going to be, what am I thinking? I, it do, literally doesn't need to be anything. We're just going to do database URI and database port is database port. Cool. Um, I mean, I should probably have some, I should have this mocked out as a, an app config thing, but I don't care. Uh, that, that's something for later. Uh, we can refactor that in later. Okay. Um, should be right we make that call make that call and as part of this I need expect there we go all right so self dot pi mongo dot mongo client maybe dot assert called once with you figure out why 
Python is doing that. I don't want a double indent. Arr. I want single indent. Uh, that is the one thing I dislike about Python, and that is Pep8's insistence on four spaces for an indent. I do not like four spaces. I like two spaces. It is so much easier to read, but I will adhere to Pep8 so that it's easier for other people to work with. Um, do, do, what am I looking for? Oh, right. Uh, it should be called with... How do we assert keyword args? Oh, where are you? Here we go. So, assert called once with, sweet. Um, so all we have to do is database URI, database port, and server selection timeout milliseconds equals 500. Oh, Flycade isn't complaining. That's good. See if it works. Close out of that and run those two. And it failed. Why did it fail? Oh. G. G has no attribute DB client. What's going on here? I thought I was patching that. What's going on here? It's failing in the git test, which implies to me that it's let's see here. Yes, this is the line that's failing. Um, and that is because app.g I only mocked out app.db.g oh. okay mm. so let's go ahead and have both of them um, so we're going to go ahead and say this one is db underscore g and this one is just G, and this will mock G. Let's see if this works. Not sure because I remember patching didn't work so nicely. Patch object has no attribute Mongo client. Let's figure out where that's actually happening. Uh, so this is in test Mongo connection line 35. 35, go. Yeah, it's complaining about this because I never told it that it should have a Mongo client. Um, so let's go ahead and tell her it has a Mongo client. Why not? <laughs> Uh, so I think I should be able to do Mongo client equals mock. I think. Let's go ahead and just put that on the same line as the patch. Get rid of all those spaces. Okay. We just told you to have that. What's going on here? I just said you get Mongo client equals mock. 
Why, why are you saying now that you don't have it? Is it because of this? It's probably because of that because I am now telling it that Mongo client is a mock, but then I'm telling that Mongo client actually has a side effect of self.db client when in fact that side effect should be inside the mock. Got it. Okay, right, so let's get rid of this. Um, and I should be able to do, let's do this on a new line actually. And side effect equals self self dot db underscore client. I think that should work. Why are you saying that? Okay, so this is app.db.pymongo, app.db.pymongo. And it is patching it. We know that for certain. Whoops, I should be starting that. So .db underscore g dot start self.db underscore g dot start why is it not working Go find patches. <sighs> Whoops. And again, you get to see my background because I keep forgetting to hide that. Oops. Yes, I like that background. Um. Uh, the reason I accidentally switched to that is because um, I work in uh, my work computer is a Mac, whereas my personal computer is a Linux box. And on Mac, in order to do a find in page, you do the essentially the Windows key F, command F um, on a Windows keyboard, which is what I have hooked up to my Mac. The command key is the Windows key. On my Linux box, Windows key F switches to the F desktop, which is currently empty, which means you can see my background. In case anyone is like offended by that one or something, um, I have switched it back to uh, the blank. So enjoy the black emptiness of void. Back to this. All right, we want to find patch. So we should be all passing K wargs, keyword args. Oh, that's new callable. I don't want new callable. Here we go. First and second. And that should return one and two. Why is this not working? Yeah, so I know this. I 
It looks like I don't actually want side effect, I want return value. So it's, let's go ahead and change that at least. Um, return value, I think. Uh, looks like this needs to be on a new line. Yay. Okay. This should be return value. It's still not working correctly. Um, this, this should guarantee that it works because going by this first equals something. Yeah, see, so this method at return value, yeah, that. Other dot side effect here, okay. I mean, if you took this and replaced it with PyMongo instead, then it will be exactly what I want. So why isn't it working? Let's try this again as just the patch. Um, so we're going to do star star, uh, Mongo client dot return value equals uh, equals self dot db client. There we go. Think I need colon there. Okay. What's it complaining about? Oh, that. There we go. Function. Okay. Client.close is failing. Okay, that, that, that's fine. That means that I'm actually failing something. Uh, that, there we go. Um, and it's complaining about, let's head back to that. It's complaining about line 24 in DB. That, in other words. So what is client? Client is nothing. Right? Yeah, client is nothing. Okay, so that's failing because we never actually told it to return something. Um, uh, let's go ahead and do if args zero, I think. I think it's args zero. If it's db, then return none. We don't care. Else it's arg0 is db client then return self dot db client I think is that what I called it self dot db client yes okay else you know honestly we could just do this else instead of having that first one but I'm gonna keep that first one because I like it uh, specifically this first one in case I ever have to do anything with the DB. Okay. Function attribute. Function object has no attribute close. What? Okay. 
Okay, so app.db.g pop return value self.pop override. Is this supposed to be side effect? Let's try it. Yeah, it's supposed to be side. Why would you do that? What is the difference between side effect and return value? I thought side effect is raise something. Uh, unit test difference between side effect and return value. Okay. My cat is very excited about the outdoors. Never gonna get to go out there, are you? <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, this is nice. Oh, oh, why would I do that? Right there. Okay, uh, so this means I don't have to bother with, oh, I do have to bother with the method. Oops, never mind. Okay, so. I honestly have no idea what side effect is, but I can remember this. If it's, if I want to return a method, then side effect. Or rather, if I want to have it act differently depending on input, pass a, a method to side effect. If I want it to simply return a basic value, then return value. And if I want it to raise uh, an exception, then side effect. I, I have no idea why that difference, but don't care. Moving on. Um, and to make this a little more tolerable for me, um, I'm gonna go ahead and pop open Rainwave. So Rainwave is basically a free streaming of a variety of types of game related music. So you have game music, which is literally just music from popular games or semi-popular games or unknown games from games. Um, but you can also do chip tunes um, OC Remix and covers. Um, all of these are related to games, of course. Chiptune is probably the least related to games because it's it's just chip tunes of any variety, including original works. OC Remix is taking video game music, uh, its melodies and whatnot, and remixing it into new music. So it it has influences from video game music and even whole chords and whatnot but it is original music in a sense covers are exactly what you find in the real in the real world in the non-video game world of what a musical cover is except it's covers of video game music i generally just go with straight up game music because it's eh, it it tends to be a lot easier to write code to but Occasionally you get people requesting things like this, which is going to have vocals in it, which screws me up. So I'm just going to vote that down without even listening to it. Ah, fine. There, I'm listening to it. Now I can vote it down. And I'm not sure why I'm not hearing anything. Uh, Where's my music? Sounds cool. But I'm not hearing anything coming out of it. No, it's not that. the fallback. 
Yeah, that should be a more reasonable volume. Hmm. This is curious. <laughs> yeah, it's not muted. Okay. This might be a, a problem with uh, with OBS trying to protect me from audio. Could also be that I'm not allowing sound. No, I'm allowing sound. Reload. Nope, I'm not getting any sound out of this at all. All right, I guess I am going without any sound. Whatever. I can survive four hours without sound. Okay, back to this. All right, so we do actually need side effect there. Um, still having problems with this one. Patch object has no attribute. Mongo client. But I told you to do that. So it's saying that it's not working. Why not? Print. Bye, Mongo. What's going on here? And let's stop running all of them. We're going to do test Mongo connection dot Mongo connection tests dot test get db opens client with app config. tests dot there we go it's a magic mock And it should have that. All right, which one is it failing on? Is it failing on here? Is it failing in the database? No, it's failing here. Oh, my cat has managed to get tape on him because he was misbehaving. I'm going to go take care of that. Black things up for a bit. And I'll be right back. Oh, the joys of owning cats. Okay, let's get back to this. Um, the Mongo client return value. Okay, uh, so I figured out what's going on. Um, so the reason it's complaining about this is that the patch object is this. The patched object is dot start. So what I have to do is I have to figure out how to access that patched object without restarting it. Or alternatively, I could do self dot mongo client. I 
Or you know what? <laughs> Why am I patching PyMongo? I don't need to patch PyMongo. I need to patch Mongo client. So self dot Mongo client client equals patch app dot db dot PyMongo dot Mongo client. And this should have a return value of, of self.db client. See if that works. Ah, whoops. Yeah, I also have to change this. So Mongo client. Oops. I can't type today. Okay, let's make sure that I have all of these. DB client doesn't need to be a patch. Yeah. Let's go ahead and pull that out. That will go up here. All of my patches go down here. Um, and then we have the starts for those patches and the stops for those patches. Good. And let's make sure that worked. Nope. <laughs> oh, right. The whole reason we did all of that. Okay, so Mongo client should have been called once with database URI, database port, and server selection timeout milliseconds equals 500. Still no. Because I'm still dealing with the patch object and not the patched object. Okay. Do I do a cert call? Yes. But it's with patch as. Yeah, okay. So I need to figure out how to access the returned value from start. So let's see if we can find patched. Wish there is a way to search for that, but <laughs> all right, um, dot start. Ah, okay, there we go. All right, I was wondering if that was a possibility. All right, so instead of doing self.mongo client, what we do is app.db.pymongo.mongo client <laughs> dot assert called once with. Nope. Last client object has no attribute of db. Uh, um, just call it underscore app. Why not? 
Magnify Name App. Okay, this is <sighs> I can't do that here because I'm not supposed to be able to use a cert, right? I thought it was a pie test thing, not a unit test thing. Ugh. All right, let's put that back. Um, And we're just going to do this self dot patched client equals that. And self dot patched client assert called once. Expected call that actual call. So we have current app patched, and we say dot config equals that. Because current app is the patch, not the. Self dot patched app. Whoops, no. Self dot patched app equals that. Self dot patched app config equals that. Try this again. Okay, we can get rid of that puts wherever that puts is. Here we go. Okay, that was a lot more fiddling than I was expecting, but seems to work now. Uh, I wish I could figure out how to get that patch client without setting it each time, but you know, it's a little extra memory. It's not much. Um, so that's one of them. And that's guaranteeing that we have made this call. We need to next check that it's assigning client to the request variable and also the, the client dot resume to the request variable um, so uh, so G I'm trying to remember how to do this so let's of course do app equals create. wait we don't need to do that we suppose we already have that why am I doing that self dot app All right, let's make sure that still works. And I've even been doing this all wrong. I had said that I was gonna do a, a direct DB call for these. Yeah, so I need to actually, <laughs> I need to actually do these direct DB calls. <laughs> uh, so, um, DB dot get DB. And we're gonna get rid of you. And oops, um, we're gonna say up here, import db. 
Let's see if this still works. Nope. Module tests has no attribute test mongo connection. No. No module name db. From app or db. There we go. Okay. Now let's figure out how to do this. So we're going to have the same setup. Um, I'm going to say from, whoop, whoop. we're going to do that same db get db. Um, and it looks like we're going to need this on all of them. I think. Nah. Now let's, let's try this without that and see if it fails. Oops. Get db signs assigns client to request variable. Okay, doesn't fail. Good. Okay, uh, so I need to figure out what test I need to run for this. I need to remember to keep drinking. So what's going on here? In here, we're assigning something to DV client. And specifically what we're assigning to it is the return value of Mongo client, which is in fact self.db client, which is a mock. Sweet. All right. so. We should be able to do a simple assert. Um, so we patched G. So, so if I patched G, let's, let's just do all of them as patched. I'm clearly going to need that. So self.patched g equals that self.patched dbg equals that self.patched g dot see this is the problem is I, I know how to uh, assign them but I don't know what the asserts are to use so let's check our asserts. Um, I don't need any of these mocks. I, it's saying just plain assert, but I thought assert caused problems with unit test. Maybe they've changed that. So let's go ahead, go up a level. Let's go find unit test. There we go, previous topic, unit test. Look for our set. Okay, so I can do a cert equal, cool. Yeah, see that's, let's, let's go ahead and show this. So assert um, self dot patch g dot db client equals, which is what mock is doing here, right? Assert yeah, equals, assert equals self dot db client so this will throw an error if it's incorrect obviously 
Yeah, here we go. Oh, it does identify as a failure and correct. What's going on? It says don't use assert and then assert works just fine. I mean, it it's a worthless error, but it works fine. What? Let's try this. Let's do the self.assert equal. And what does that return? It's a slightly better assertion, but I mean, it's still worthless. Now it's saying that the two mocks are not the same. So when we call pymongo.mongo client, it should return self.db client. That's this. And when it returns that, it then assigns it to client and then assigns that to g.db client. So patched g.db client should be client, which should be pymongo.mongo client return value which should be self.db client. What's going on here? Let's try side effect. See, this is the problem with not understanding the difference between side effect and return value. I, I have no idea which one I'm supposed to be doing. No. And here's the interesting thing now that I look at that error. Magic mock name equals g.dv client. Which is what's happening here. So I feel like I need like two different mocks there. Let's Let's try to assign something here. So let's say um, this here. So DVG is the one that's having this problem. So let's say that DB client equals zero. Sure, why not? Let's complain about that. What happens if we just flat out remove this? Yeah, yeah, complain all you want. See, that's my problem there, is that it's trying to pull its own DB client even though I told it not to. What is this? Print G. It's a magic block. It's refusing to 
eternity be quiet. Maybe it needs everything in here. So let's go ahead and try that. So we're going to say uh, db underscore client is zero. Nope. Let's try that. Let's print client. Let's see what that is. That should just be the mock. Yeah. But it's not accepting the assignment. Oh. Wait a second. Am I doing this right? Yeah, it's patch G. Okay. So we don't want to patch object. Patch object is patching just one method on a uh, one method or one attribute on a class. And I don't want to do that. I want to patch all of G. I can't do this because the dictionary doesn't exist when I go to patch it. What I want is a magic lock that actually responds when I tell it to change something. Oh, well, let's go searching. So Python unit test assert assigned attribute. Microsoft, what? Oh, let's see if that has anything to say. Yeah, 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 yeah. Attributes? Let's figure out what it was saying that it was matching on. Signing an instance attribute. Signing an instance attribute. Here we go. These are all for 
for unit test, which isn't actually what I want. This isn't what I want, but it's it has more information that I'd like. Yeah, so it's it's failing to mock name, but Try this again. Python unit test patch. No, oh, that's mocking a method. A mock a method. So And this is an extremely exciting episode. I stare at documentation. Uh, all right, so let's... so what's getting returned by this is correct. The problem is that when I try to do g.dv client, it just it ignores it. 
it it doesn't check that I'm actually assigning something. Let's go ahead and print that right afterwards. Well, that's interesting. That is correct. So it's my access of that that's not working. Why? Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> I feel stupid. Um, and this is another part of software development that you will encounter in the real world is that you will spend, in this case, it was only like, what, 15 minutes trying to figure out a bug that doesn't make any sense. And then you realize it's because you spelled it wrong. Patched G is the G that exists here, not here. Ow. I can't. <sighs> Let's see if that works. Nope. What? Oh, patch dbg, not gdb. There we go. Uh, that was not what I wanted to do. There we go. And it passed. Yay. Okay. Wow. Let's go ahead and assert the other one because I like to have all of those asserts in the same place. So we're going to say self dot patch dbg db should be self.db client dot resume and I hope that works yes sweet okay and flakegate isn't complaining about it which is awesome um, I was worried it would complain that you can't have two asserts and I have to tell it to be quiet and behave itself but yeah seems to have worked okay so uh, we have these two tests, which are probably the big ones. That's this here and these. And oh, right. I should probably have a def test get db returns gdb. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. So d dot get db. Oh, whoops, no. Uh, self dot assert equal that to um, self dot db client. Nope, not self dot db client dot resume. Yes. Awesome. Okay. So it checks the connection. Um, this one is not actually working yet. This should be a call to self dot, this should be a call to g.db client dot server info. So db dot get db self dot assert. No, not self dot assert. We're going to do self dot db client dot what was this server info server info server info dot assert called once testing the wrong thing 
<laughs> okay. Expected server info to have been called once. It was called zero times. So after we have grabbed the client, let's do client dot server info. Cool. Okay. So we've got to check in the connection. Now we're going to say um, self dot db client dot server info dot side effect equals that mess hi mongo dot errors dot server selection timeout error now looks like we're gonna have to put this on two lines and to find any pi mongo yes that's because i haven't imported it let's go ahead and import that Yep, you're not having a problem. Cool. Okay. And <clears throat> uh, let's see. Then we need to assert raises. I think that's what we want. DB dot get DB, and it should raise. Hi, Mongo. Errors. Server selection. Timeout. Error. That's a mess. Let's go ahead and put this on the line. Okay. Get ready. Pass there. Why are you complaining? Backslash is redundant between the brackets. Cool. How do I do a start raises? Exception callable. Whoops. Uh, so we need to do this in reverse order. The easiest way is to get rid of that. And it said do db dot get db. Cool. And this allows me passing stuff in, right? Yeah, args and keywords. Cool. Okay. So, so this verifies that get db raises an exception if Mongo is not available. But um, I actually want to check that uh, that that server info raises an exception. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have another one here. And the reason for this is what if PyMongo changes how it handles things and now server info doesn't raise that specific error. If that's a problem, well then my, my other tests aren't going to catch that because my other tests explicitly say it should raise this kind of error, check that it raises that error. Well, yeah, obviously if I say raise that specific error and then check that it raises it, it will raise it. Um, but what if, um, there we go. so this is, not the smartest thing to test, uh, but this will protect me from any upgrade problems. So test uh, Mongo uh, server info raises 
error for bad connection. So, um, honestly, we should be able to do this without any sort of patching because I'm literally just testing the proper behavior of PyMongo. So let's do client equals PyMongo.Mongo client, and we're going to pass in invalid and one, two, three, four. So this should definitely throw an error. Um, and we want server selection timeout milliseconds equals we honestly don't care about this at all. I'm going to do one. Um, this should be tabbed in. And then we can do self.assert raises. And this is that really long one. So pymongo.errors.server selection timeout error. And it should be client.server info. run all those tests and boom cool so we just have two more here right and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rip out the test endpoint I'm gonna rip out all of that DB code I just wrote or that I copied over and then I'm gonna rewrite it at the bare minimum um, and then I'm gonna compare what I have at bare minimum to what I copied over so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rename this file uh, and the goal of that is to make sure that I have tested every piece of code I have in here. <clears throat> the other thing that I could do is I could run a coverage analyzer, and that will tell me what all I have tested. Um, and I'm actually kind of curious what that does, so I might do that as well. So uh, let's go ahead and do... All right, so close DB, so this, um, and it should be popping. So we should um, self dot patched G DBG dot assert no dot pop dot assert called ah this is that. Uh, this is when I was looking at the, the test that we have. So assert called once. Yeah, so they have ways to test that you called it any time, any number of times, that you called it exactly once, that you called it the most recent with a certain uh, number of arguments that you've only called it once and the most recent call was with these arguments um, and that you called it at any point in time with a certain number of arguments but there's no way to check that it was called x number of times so it was called there's no way to assert that it was called twice but you can do Assert has calls. Um, I'm trying to figure out what call is. All right, I need to import call. Got it. All right, so there is a way to assert that it has a certain number of calls um, and that is called in a certain order. But that still isn't guaranteeing that it's only those calls, that it was never called with anything else. To do that, um, you actually have to do mock calls and the length on the mock calls is what will check how many calls there were. 
So mathematically, if you check that it has two specific calls and that there were only two calls, there you go. You observe that that was the only things it was ever called with. It's a bit obtuse, but eh, whatever. So uh, it's not assert called, it's assert has calls. So assert has calls. <clears throat> um, and this is an array of call objects. So uh, let's do that. Um, and we're going to have a call object with db and none, and a call object with db client and none. Since those are the only two time, only two ways that pop should have been called. <clears throat> okay. What are you complaining about here? Undefined method or undefined name call. Yes, that is true. I think it's here. Yes. Okay. Let's see if that actually works. It did. Alrighty then. Um, so let's see what happens if we get rid of that. It failed. Cool. Now let's add on g dot pop law none, and it should not throw an error now. Correct. But now we say self dot patched dbg dot pop dot mock calls dot length and we do self dot assert equal and this should be two that should throw an error wow <laughs> I've been writing too much Ruby code. I actually forgot the way to do it with Python. What? There we go. Yes, three is not equal to two. <laughs> Thank you, Python, for confirming that for me. All right, and it passes now. Cool. Okay, so the only test we should have left to write is this one. And that is that the closed DB closes client connections if the client is not none. If it exists. Def test close DB does not close client connection if none. Okay, um, and that's just to take care of the possibility of what if we never actually called get db. Uh, we want to make sure that this if client is not none takes effect. Okay, so um, now client dot Client equals g dot pop db client should return self dot db client. So that should work correctly. And then what we'll do is we'll say self dot db client equals none for the other one. Cool. All right. So db dot close db and self dot patched. No, not patched. We don't need that. It's db client um, dot assert oop, dot close dot assert called once with. Oh, just once. We don't need once with. Yeah, that should be all I need. Now let's go ahead and write this one while we're at it. So self dot db client equals none. Then do db dot close db and self dot db client dot close 
dot cert not called. Cert not called. The type has no attribute quotes. Ow, oops. How do I test that then? <laughs> I mean, if, if it if it fails, then it will actually fail. It, it will throw an assertion, or it will throw an error because it will say that none has no attribute close. Assert not races, maybe? Uh, where's assert races? Assert races? No, 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 no. It's over here. Here we go. So we've got assert raises, assert warns. Is there an assert not raises? No, we're back at the top. This maybe? No, because it insists on that. All right, Python unit test, cert not raises. Yeah, this seems to be the best. It's not pretty, but it works. Um, so we're going to say self, uh, no, we're going to do try, whoops, try that and accept. Um, I don't know. Let's get rid of this and find out. None type object has no attribute close, attribute error. Okay. So try that, except uh, whoops, except with attribute error. 
as e. Let's try that. Nah, nah, we're just gonna erase it regardless. Uh, so self dot fail. Um, close db should pot call client dot close if client is not. Like a shooting point. Yes. Okay. So let's go ahead and try to split this onto two lines. Oops. Like that. See if that works. Cool. And if we get rid of that. I think that's the correct way to do it. Okay, it looks like I have all of my tests written. Now, I'm not going to refactor a little bit because I don't like having that helper method at the bottom. It's harder to read that way. So instead, we'll have the helper method here. That's easier. Now all of my tests are together. All right, make sure everything still runs. Make sure all of my tests still run. 14 tests running, woo! Okay. Um, cool. Uh, I just said 10 tests, so let's make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Cool. All right, we have 10 tests running. Um, what I should be able to do is rename this file, create a new one, um, get rid of the test endpoint, and that should do everything. Nice. All right, let's go ahead and do that. Um, yeah. Uh, Rename you first. And we're going to call you db back. And uh, then we're going to edit db app slash db dot pi. I'm going to write you out. And we're going to get rid of this. What are you complaining about? Ah, you are not using G. That's fine. Okay. Everything failed. Woo! Uh, I've got 13 errors. I was not expecting 13 errors. All right, so let's look at the non-test Mongo connection errors. We should be here. Test health, health endpoint. App.tv has no attribute in an app. Okay, um, so that is this thing here. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna say def init app and we accept an app and whoops, we do nothing. And now we have 14 tests failing. You know, adding code should not cause more tests to fail. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, nope. 
ran 14 tests in 0.129 seconds. Now we've got nine failures. Why nine failures instead of 10? Because one of the tests is saying does not throw an exception. I think that's what's going on. Be nice to know which one is not failing. Uh, let's see. Post on request end. Um, DB closes client connection if exists, does not close client connection if none. Those two are failing, cool. Um, close DB removes request variables, cool. Get DB, one, two, three, four. Did I have missed something? Yeah. Close DB, get DB tree. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so there are five here, and I have how many get DB tests? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so it's not those. Got the three codes DB. Um, that one is probably failing. Mongo connection teardown tests. This one. Ah! That's why this isn't failing because this is not testing my code. It's testing Mongo's code. Um, let's actually move that into a separate test suite. So tests slash test third party. Not RB. Hi. <laughs> what am I doing? Uh, all right. So in order to do this, we need import pi Mongo import unit test do i need mock i don't need mock um and class uh mongo tests we'll do pi mongo tests unit test dot test case now a couple of others will fail if things change like what if they no longer call the connection thing mongo client that will fail but it will be a an obvious failure. Whereas if the type of error that's being returned changes, then it's not an obvious failure. So let's go ahead and do this. Tef, def, test. Um, client open <coughs> raises. Uh, raises exception if no server. There we go. I figure it's going to do that. Um, okay, so it's not complaining about anything about the except the fact that I'm not using Python though. All right, let's go ahead and grab that out of here. Where is it? Here. Grab that. Put it there. And we can get rid of this. Okay. Run those tests again. Cool. Okay. Um, now we're going to go through and we're going to write this, this appdb.py explicitly so that it passes the tests. That's all we're going to do. So we need a get DB method. Um, so def get DB. And it should not accept anything. So we'll do that. What are you doing? Put the two blank ones. It should still all be failing, of course. Um, eventually, the does not raise error. Wait, no, does not raise error is something else. What is that something else? Yeah, okay, so this I should be able to get to pass. 
literally by just writing close db uh, pass and put spaces in like it likes and no nope, it's still failing why is it still failing tests close db does not close connection if not ah it's failing to patch um, because app does not have attribute g so let's go ahead and put g in there okay um, one failure eight errors where's this failure here we go Okay, all right, so error means that um, there was an error in processing it. Fail means that it, the assertion failed. Awesome, this is good to know. So this is why they want you to use the built-in asserts instead of the, um, instead of, uh, no. This is why they want you to use the unit te test assert methods instead of the built-in assert. Um, because the built-in assert will cause an error, whereas the unit test asserts will cause a fail. And so you can track down failures better. All right. Um, let's take care of the errors first. So expected app DB to have the attribute G. Looks like that's what all of them are complaining about. So we need to go up here and we need to say from flask import g. And now it's complaining about app.db is not a package. Oh, no module named app.db.pymongo. So it's failing to find pymongo, cool. Um, so we're going to also go and say import PyMongo. And app.db does not have the attribute current app. Cool. Um, I think that's Flask. Okay. All right. We've got eight failures. Awesome. It's what I should be getting. <laughs> That's not awesome. It's what I should be getting. Um, okay. So it's it's just doing failures, which means I can start solving these one by one. I'm just going to work from the bottom up. So um, get db returns g db. Uh, so let's let's do exactly that. Uh, get db should return something I don't know. G dot db is not patched, right? It is not patched. <clears throat> so I don't know how to get that one yet. So we'll deal with that later. Um, server selection timeout error not raised. Here we go. Expected Mongo client to be called once, called zero times. This one we can solve. So this is test get db opens client with app config. Test get db opens client with app config. Um, now, if I were doing true, uh, if I were doing true TDD, I'd literally only pass in the text database URI and database port. But I'm doing a little, I'm doing it a little more funky. I'm doing in a way that it's, it makes sense. Uh, so what I want to do here is, um, I'm literally just going to call pymongo dot mongo client, and I'm going to call it with the actual config. Um, so current app dot config 
database URI and current app config database port and server selection timeout milliseconds equals 500 and it. Okay, so I should go down to seven failures now. Sweet. All right, I'm down to seven failures. Um, expected close DB to have been called once when test Mongo connect closed on request end. Okay, so on request end means teardown context. So app dot ah uh, so this is why i usually copy code from other places is i don't remember what it's called so db back app dot teardown app context there we go and it should call close db cool and we're down to six failures four errors why are we getting four errors Ah, ClosedDB takes zero positional arguments, but one was given. Where? Which one was calling this? Uh, error, 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 here we go. Test hello. Okay, so this is that whole expects a parameter. Um, I'm not doing anything with the parameter, so I don't care. And still getting errors. Whoops. It's none. There we go. Yep, and we're down to six failures now. Cool. All right. Um, I mean, it literally does nothing right now. Close DB does nothing, but it does get called, and so it passes the um, here we go. It does assert that it it calls close DB on request end. Cool. Okay, um, can't do that one yet. Here we go. Oh, let's not do that one because that, that will cause problems. Um, get DB assigns client to request variable. This one I should be able to test. So get DB assigns client to request variable. So I should be able to say, that client equals that and g dot db client equals client and that should take care of the first assert so if we look here um, magic mock g db client is not equal to the mock we expected now we test it and magic mock g.db is not equal to db client resume. That's the second one. So we need to do g.db equals client dot resume. And that should work. Five failures. Sweet. Okay. Um, we can knock this one out quickly too. So expect server info to have been called once on the client. So client dot server info. Down to three errors, three failures. How do we get down to three failures? Uh, so let's see. No, no. Checks connection. That's one we were supposed to solve. Raises exception if Mongo not available. Ah, yes. So that one 
works because we said that when we call server info, side effect should be timeout error. Yes, okay. That makes sense to be down to three failures. Okay, um, so we've got two closed DBs and a get DB returns GDB. So let's go ahead and do that. Get DB returns GDB. GDB. So we should return g.db and down to two failures. Now they're just the closed db ones. So closed db closes client connections if it exists. So um, g.db client. Now let's, let's take care of the other one first because that will help with this one. Uh, so remove request variables. Test close db requ removes request variables. So I am expecting that g.pop should be called with db none and should then be called with db client none. And that's correct. Okay. Finally, um, we need to solve closest client connections. So we need to grab the client out of there and we need to say client dot close because it should close the client. Now, the nice thing about TDD is that this is now going to throw the other error, which is going to cause another failure, which is expected. Yes. So this other failure is saying closed DB should not call it if client is none. So we need to check if client is not equal to none, then close. That's oh, if client is not none. And there we go. So this is the bare minimum TDD collection. And you'll notice there's one big difference here. I'm missing that if db not in g. So what does that do? So the if db not in g uh, guarantees that if it's not already existing, uh, if, if we've already requested the connection once, don't try to connect again. That's an important thing. We should be testing that. So let's add another test. So def, def test get db does not connect again if called previously or if connection exists. All right, so for this one, I'm going to have to learn how to patch this kind of behavior, if db not in g. I'm not sure how to do that. So this is going to be with the, so with patch um, app dot dv dot g <clears throat> what is the in so let's, let's go ahead and look that up close these <clears throat> um, python in method In, in, in. That's not helpful. There we go. Contains. Okay, so if we override contains, that should work. So Yeah, 
let's do it this way. So self dot patched? No. Um, Hmm, I'm not sure how to do this. Let's try it with patched. So patched uh, dbg dot underscore contains contains um, equals and we're going to make this a lambda. It'll be easy. Um, so lambda self and item. We're just going to return true. So we need to assert that Mongo client is not called. Um, so self dot uh, patched Mongo. Longo? Where's Patrick Longo? I know it's in here somewhere. Patch client. Dot cert not called. What's it complaining about? Missing white space after the comma. Invalid syntax. Why? Ah, okay. I prefer the parentheses anyways, it makes it easier to read. That should not have happened. Oh! Because <laughs> we never called it. Oh, that's that's beautiful. <laughs> All right. Expected Mongo client to not have been called. It was called one time. Okay, uh, let's, let's also test these other things that should be happening here. So it should not do server info. It should not do um, DB client and the DB assignments. So we're going to go ahead and test that. So let's grab all of my asserts. You. And where's the server info one? Server info. And do whatever I just did. What did I do? Okay. Get DB checks connection. Here we go. Okay. And we'll put that here. But we should assert that it is still returned. So, um, right val is that. So, self dot assert equal uh, what is g dot db nothing but I should be able to do is just equal to g dot db yeah uh, so assert ret val is equal to um, self dot patch dbg dot db. Um, we need to assert not equal. That's actually leave all of these alone and check that that still works. Yes, cool. Okay. Uh, so what I was testing there is that this actually does what I think it does. Um, now we're going to do assert not called, assert not called, assert not equal, assert not equal. Um, 
And let's go ahead and uh, assert normal behavior. Doesn't happen. Assert. Oh, it is so nice to be able to use comments. Uh, so, um, I grew up writing code where I was told you comment all the time. You write tons of comments. My current job, we have a standard where you don't add comments, like, ever. You're not allowed to comment. Uh, the reasoning they have is, and this is decent reasoning if it's followed correctly. Um, the reasoning is that code should be self-documenting. So you should have uh, variable names like, or method names like test get DV does not connect again if connection exists. That's, that's good practice. Your method names, your variable names should document partially what your thing is supposed to be doing. The problem is occasionally you have too much in a method that needs explanation because it's not blindingly obvious. And the reason that you comment is so that in the future when you come back and you need to maintain something, you know what's going on. You know why you wrote the code that the way you wrote it. And this is one of those cases. I want to know why am I doing these four asserts here? Like, what are these asserts for? Because it's not immediately obvious from them. Um, some of them are like server info, assert not called. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. But this assert not equal? Well, that's because I want to assert that the normal behavior doesn't happen. And I want to assert that uh, g.db is still returned. Okay, let's go ahead and run that test and it should fail. Yes, it did. Expected Mongo clients not have been called. So um, this is kind of stupid, but I'm gonna do it anyways. If DB not in G, then we're just going to do this first one. And that should cause the next assert to fail. Local variable client reference before assignment. Ah, yeah, there we go. Because I did this client here. Um, so, yeah, we're just gonna put all of them in. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> and should not pass, yes, okay. So now the code should look basically identical. Um, and at this point, uh, the, the practice would be to refactor. So uh, if you're writing TDD, the practice uh, is to write tests, write code that passes those tests with a minimal amount of code, uh, which I, I kind of skipped a little bit here and there, like, you know, like this one, I, I actually use the current app config uh, to do it, but we'll forgive that. Um, and then the final step is to refactor so that it's readable, so that it's usable. And the reason that you can refactor freely is because now if you make a change to your code that breaks the functionality, one of your tests will blow up. And so the goal is refactor to something that's more usable, more readable, and make sure it doesn't destroy any of your tests. Your tests are supposed to test your functionality. So anything you actually want to happen, any of your business requirements should be tested. And then when you go to write more code, if it somehow breaks that functionality, if you're no longer meeting your business requirements, the test will let you know. So anytime you get new business requirements, write tests, then write the code. Okay. So with that in mind, I don't want have want to have this random. I'm just getting hiccups. 
Uh, I don't want to have this random 500 sitting out here. What's 500? Why would we care about 500? Well, let's examine why we want 500. We want 500 because it is a server selection timeout milliseconds, obviously. But why 500? Well, that's a setting that we should have. So let's put that in the settings. So we're going to say, uh, timeout milliseconds or Mongo server timeout milliseconds. And we're just going to say Mongo server timeout milliseconds. And this is explicit this way so that we can make sure that it is calling with the values that we have put in our settings. Um, let's go ahead and put that in a new line. And this should be Mongo server timeout milliseconds. Let's go ahead and run that. It should fail because this no longer matches our code because our code isn't written to handle that. Boom. That's failing. Now there's a little bit of trickiness here, um, namely in that the current app doesn't, okay, I'll show you what I mean. If we instead do current app dot config, Mongo server time, I really need to shorten that. <laughs> um, and that needs to be on its own line. Going to complain? Yeah, it's going to complain. But it's not between brackets. What do you expect from me? Rawr. Okay, let's let's do it this way. Okay, it's kind of ugly, but we'll deal with it later. All right, so it's now saying that all of my tests are passing. That's not right because I don't have that config set up. So now I have to figure out how to test it so that this is working here. Hmm. I'm not really sure how to test this. I'm not going to worry too much about it. It is a missing coverage, but it's not incredibly important. It will be obvious if you try to run this, that this is failing out because it will say that config option doesn't exist. What are you trying to do? So I'm not going to worry about it too much right now. I, I can be a bit sloppy here and there if I want. Okay, should still pass, pray. Okay, now that we have all of that, <laughs> that was a lot to take in. Um, uh, let's, yeah, so we're gonna copy over the comments because I like comments. Comments are what allow you to actually read things. Um, and also, I do like the ordering of the other one more. Um, I like to have my imports, my plain imports, before I have my uh, from imports. Just have it. Um, do copy over the other one. And copy the final one. Final one. And we're going to change this one, actually. Um, close. Oh, wait. 
right, no, this is, here we go. Close DB in ending request. Close DB connection. It was complaining about two spaces. What? Yeah, we're just gonna. Boom. All right. Uh, let's let's put some extra spacing in here to make things more readable. So that there and that there. All right, and now we can go down here, we can say explore and remove the old one because I have a better one now. Hooray! And run the test, make sure I didn't break anything with adding comments. I mean, I shouldn't have, but... Okay, we no longer need that. We have tested all of our Mongo connection stuff. We have tested our third party. So now we have to deal with the health endpoint. So, um, I want to test that the health endpoint returns, um, returns some text about this, the database being up. And if we look back over here, close that out, and over here, um, checking something over here. So, we want this text. So DB status up and DB status down. I'm gonna go ahead and put that as a comment here just to make this easier. Um, cool. Okay, so that text is what we should be expecting uh, from the health response. Um, so we should have two tests here, one for the database is up, one for the database is down. Um, and we determine that by catching errors from the GitDB. So um, we'll have one test, yeah, test, health response uh, health response text has DB up if no exceptions and uh, test health response text has db down if uh, get db exception. So in order to handle this, we are going to patch app.db.getDB and um, Honestly, we don't care beyond that. <laughs> this one, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, if it calls get DB, then we have the, the text. Um, so we self.assert regex response, response.data should include um, the db status up. Ah, right. Uh, from unit test dot mock import patch. Ah, right. Uh,
we need to have all of those patch out the database, I think. Yeah. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, self dot db equals patch app dot db dot get db um, I think that's all I want and self dot patch db do we care about patch db no we don't care about patch db um, self dot db.start and tear down self.db.stop okay and then here um, we should do oh, we don't need this anymore response equals self dot what's it complaining about Why am I getting blank blanks here? It's weird. Whatever. Um, response equals self dot app dot get slash health follow redirects. Still don't know what follow redirects does. <laughs> um, that should be it. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if that works. Oh. Uh, and let's limit our testing to tests slash test health endpoint, not slash. <sighs> cool. All right, so it's not, uh, this was what I was worried about is I didn't know if the certain rejects made sure that the entire thing matched, but it doesn't. So this one will still pass because we still have that uptime data in there. Um, this one is not returning it though. So let's go ahead and return that. Um, we're gonna say uh, response equals uh, nothing and then we're going to add in response equals db status up and then we're going to add in response plus equals that and end oh <laughs> return response Okay, that's passing. Now we're gonna change this one <clears throat> so that it fails. So self.db dot side effect. Think this will do what I want. Equals what's the error it's supposed to throw? I can never remember this. PyMongo dot something or other. Test slash test Mongo connection. Do, 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 do. Where is this error? Here we go. Let's just yank that and put it there. And get rid of the Pi Mongo at the beginning. Pi Mongo doesn't exist, so we need to import it. Mongo. And yeah, so we want to do the same thing, but DB status down should be in there now. Nope, it's not DB side effect, it's 
Oh, yeah, I guess it is. Okay. That should fail. And it's a fail, not an error. Sweet. So, let's go over here. Um, we are not importing PyMongo yet, so let's go ahead and import PyMongo. And we're going to try <coughs> db.getdb. And so if this if this throws an exception, we should have db status down. If it doesn't throw an exception, we should have db status up. Uh, this should have been a plus equals. So if it doesn't throw an error, plus equals db status up. Except uh, that crazy long error message, pymongo dot errors dot server selection timeout error response plus equals db status down. Okay. What's G? I know I'm using it in my test, but it doesn't look like I'm act actually using it here. That is because previously when I was doing the slash test endpoint, I was testing g.db client.server info, which I don't have anymore, so I can get rid of that. And then I can go into the test for the other one. So split tests slash test mongo connection and self dot g is it used anywhere it is not sweet we can get rid of that and that and that yay one less patch okay Huh. Should have raised that error. Why did it not raise that error? Python unit test change side effect after patching. Well, that's interesting. I might want that. Let's look for side effect. Mock that side effect. I think the problem is that I'm doing it on the self DB. So let's go ahead and do the self.patched. Self.patched DB equals that. Self.patched DB equals that. Yeah, yeah, complain all you want. Ah, and now it's passing. Okay, that's the key. It needs to be uh, on the patch. Um, so the reason I thought that is. Uh, when looking at this stuff here, way up here, here we go. Uh, so here they did mock equals mock. They initialized a mock 
and then they set the side effect. So what patch does, I'm beginning to understand how this all fits together. This is nice. I'm learning a lot on this. Um, so what patch does is when you create this patch, it's saying here are the instructions for creating a mock to assign to app.db.getDB. And then when you do db start, it assigns a new magic mock to that. It doesn't assign the patch to that, it assigns a magic mock that it creates. And so uh, what's going on is I've been trying to set a side effect on this patch, but what I actually want is to set a side effect on the magic mock that the patch assigns to app.db.getDB. Now I could do that within the patch instructions by doing side effect equals whatever, but I want that to change between them and those instructions I can later modify by modifying the actual magic mock. That's what I'm doing here. The self.patch.db self is a magic mock. So when I go and edit its side effect, I'm editing a mock's side effect, which does work. Okay. I am understanding it now. Hooray. Okay, and I should be able to get rid of these two. And it is all working. Nice. Okay, but <laughs> you might have noticed in the <clears throat> in the response that it just looks terrible. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and actually see what's happening when I actually hit that endpoint. Here we go. Health. DB status up. Uptime. I kind of want a line break in there. It's a little hard to read right now. Also, that's inaccurate. That is the that is the system's uptime, not the server's up, not the the Flask server's uptime. Wondering if there's a way to get Flask server uptime. Hmm. We'll work on that next. Uh, do, 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 do. What am I looking for? Oh, here we go. So let's go ahead and put a new line in these. See if that does it. If not, it'll have to be a break. Yeah, it'll have to be a break. So BR. There we go. DB status up. Uptime, one day, 12 hours, seven minutes, 51 seconds. Yeah. Okay. By the way, that was the refactoring there. Now let's do a little bit more refactoring, make it look nicer. So we're going to split that. Split that. So, and so now we have we can actually go ahead and comment this. So this is database status, server uptime. And run my tests, cool. Let's run all of my tests. What's going on here? Mongo connection. Mongo connection teardown tests. Yeah, I don't need that anymore. Yeah, okay, cool. Why is slash test still working? Slash test should not be working. What's going on here? What's 
give some other random. Still runs fine. Okay, so this is this is literally not actually caring if it gets back. Okay, I figured out why. Um, so, uh, okay, so what happens is when a request comes into Flask, um, it it sets up the request object, the G. It checks the endpoint. Uh, it doesn't find that endpoint, so it says, I'm going to return a 404. It puts a 404 in the request object, sends it back, and in around that time, it then also, I have no idea if you can see my hands, um, <laughs> uh, in that time, it also calls a teardown, and the teardown is what calls that closed DB. So we literally don't care what endpoint it's hitting. And that's nice to know. It's not essential, but it is nice to know. Okay, I have all of my Mongo stuff set up. I have the connection between the two set up. Um, let's go ahead and test the, the database up and database down. It's saying database status up, cool. Let's bring the database down. So close out of that. DB, no, DC, stop, Mongo. Okay, Mongo should be down now. Reload. And it is down. And that uh, slight uh, delay that you saw is because I have a 500 millisecond timeout window. Um, that, that's not a big thing to be concerned about because the only time I should see that timeout window is when the database is down, which hopefully should never happen. But, you know. Eh. Okay. Awesome. Uh, let's, I'm going to go ahead and restart. Uh, no, let's go ahead and edit this. There we go. Um, so it depends on Mongo. Good. This should also depend on Mongo. Uh, there we go. And stop backend. And up dash e backend. And it decided to start the Mongo with it. Awesome. And up. Woo. Okay, um, so this has essentially been completed. Um, let's go ahead and create the merge request. So it's three right docker, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so let's go over here and we'll fetch, which should give us the new one. Um, we're going to get checkout, checkout. I don't know why I had to tab complete that one. Uh, three dash right. All right, we're going to stash checkout and pop. And it looks like it auto merged, so we don't have a problem there. Uh, let's go ahead and see what got changed here. Looks like what I got rid of is Python user base. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, because I put them here instead. Okay. And that's the only one it had to auto merge, right? Uh, yep. Cool. Oh, I removed that as part of this. Okay. Uh, modified app init. Modified test hello. Test health. 
this is a lot of stuff I'm doing in one. Um, so let's go ahead and add dot dot and commit. All right, so three uh, added Mongo to Docker Compose and um, backend unit tests. All right, so um, let's let's do the Docker Compose stuff. So added Mongo service to Docker Compose. Don't really need to say beyond that. Made required for backend. Um, that should take care of the Docker Compose stuff. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. Uh, but I think I did some other stuff as well. So let's go ahead and check. So that doesn't look like it changed at all. Oh, I got rid of the log driver, but that's not important. Um, that part isn't important. Ooh, I need to change ports. Ooh, grab this and get out of there. And ports, 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 ports. Here we go. Change that to 51017. Actually, I shouldn't even bother. It shouldn't have any exposed ports. Type it all out again. This is why I like having it in the other window. Oh well. Um, added Mongo to Docker Compose and uh, backend unit tests. Added, uh, let's go ahead and put this as a list. Added Mongo service to Docker Compose. Required for backend. And let's go ahead and back down here. And this is why I do dash V and go through line by line of what I changed. Because I find things like that. Like I don't want that that port number. Um, so that's taken care of. Um, that should all be taken care of. Um, so these are all my tests. Uh, I'm not going to bother with commenting on tests because that's not really important. So we're going to get rid of all those tests here. We will comment on on the code code. Um, that's not worth commenting on. It's pretty obvious what I was doing there. Um, here we go. So we added DB module, DB module, which handles creating and closing Mongo connections. Okay, that's basically all of that. Um, we don't care about this part. It's, why did it, why did it think I was, oh, because of, ah, because of flake eight. <laughs> uh, so these, these lines you see where it was removing a line and then adding the same line, but with a space at the beginning, that's flake eight. That's, that's Flake complaining about the fact that I should have spaces at the beginning of my comments. Whatever. Um, and added DB status to slash health endpoint. 
So that's all of that. Cool. Um, minor flake eight required changes. Um, that's not necessary. All right, looks like I covered everything. Right and quit. And push. Cool. All right, let's uh, head over here. I'm going to get rid of. Oh, actually, let's back up. Find. Where's my commits? I always forget that the commits are up here. Let's go to this commit. Expand the text, copy, back up all the way, Whoop. there we go, back up to here, and edit, paste. So all going to work in progress. And this is obviously assigned to me. Um, squash. I think that's it. Cool. Save changes. Okie dokie then. Um, merge. Cool. Okay, that's another one down. Let's go look at the board. Uh, da, 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 wrong one. We need to switch to. Oops. Yeah. Let's switch to basic system. And remove the active tag. Okay, and now um, this epic is done. We are all done here. Um, so, in uh, in industry, uh, usually epics are put into what's called a feature branch. So instead of merging all of these into master, I'd be merging into basic system or something like that. And then when I went to uh, finish off the Epic, I'd merge basic system into master. I'm not doing that here because these Epics are mostly just an organizational thing for me. And I'm of the opinion that whenever I complete any one of these sub tickets, it should be shippable. Now, if you're in industry, when you complete an Epic, it should be shippable. Sometimes, sometimes I do per ticket, per ticket shippable. Sometimes I do per Epic shippable. In my case, I'm doing per ticket shippable. Uh, shippable means that when I'm done with a ticket and merge it into master, nothing should break. It should still function exactly as uh, I would expect it to based on my tests. And the best way to do that is to run your tests and if they pass, hooray, hurrah. If they don't, well, then you shouldn't have merged into master. Um, now, uh, GitLab provides the ability to set up CI/CD pipelines. And so what a CI/CD pipeline is, is it allows you to run your tests automatically whenever you merge into master or try to merge into master. I don't know how to use pipelines, but it is on the list to do that uh, for this project. Namely, once I have it deployed onto my server, then I'm going to start looking into pipelines. That will be the epic for that period of time. But right now, I'm not worried about that. Uh, so I'm going to move this guy, which has been completed, into closed. We have completed an epic. And that's roughly four hours, I think, that I've been running. Oh, 
YouTube says three hours. I'll call that good enough. It is good to end at the end of an epic because that's epic. <laughs> Lame jokes. That's why you come here. Uh, all right. So this is the next epic. Um, I've already set it up. This is basically just setting up Pymodem and then creating each of the individual models that I've already determined somewhere. Uh, let's go to the wiki. Design notes. This thing. So this is what I'm going to be setting up. Uh, each of these is going to be a separate class and I need to set up the connections between them um, and then maybe some logic for it. We'll figure that when we get to it. Uh, the first part, of course, will be setting up PyModem and making sure I understand how that works, how to test it, so on. Then we'll start from the top and go down. Whew. Okay. Uh, yeah. So one epic down, one epic ready, and a whole bunch of epics waiting. <laughs> this is going to be a while, but uh, I am making progress. I'm learning lots of stuff with unit tests. And I hope you are too. I will catch you next time, which should be Monday, uh, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Central Time. You have been watching Hour of Fib, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.